This week on the Alexander Robinson Movie News Show, we're talking about an animated Godzilla movie. Who is Zendena playing in Spider-Man Homecoming? And Gambit is once again in trouble. All that and more on this episode of the Alexander Robinson Movie News Show. Get ready for the Alexander Robinson Movie News Show, featuring the latest news about the movies you want to see. Starting in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1... Hello everyone and welcome to the Alexander Robinson Movie News Show. This is episode 15 for August 28th, 2016. So, I want to say some stuff before we get into the show. Because, we, I mean, we actually don't have that many news stories to talk about. Um, but uh, I would like to say, obviously there was no show last week. And if you missed my channel update video that I just put up yesterday... I said that this show is going to be reduced to a monthly show where I gather up to five, six news stories that I think are the best news stories of the month and voice my opinion on them, or at least the most interesting news stories. So the reason for that is because I've been busy with a lot of stuff in my personal life, whether it's a job just a lot of stuff happening, and by doing this show every week, I find that I have less time to just do other things in my personal life. Like, I'm always working, whether it's at my paying job or for YouTube stuff. So, I decided to cut it down uh, to a monthly show, and um, I hope that's okay. And without further ado, let's get into the news. We have some interesting news stories to talk about. Uh, first, I'm going to start with, um, I'm going to start off with Pokemon, gotta catch them all, gotta catch them all, Pokemon. Um, so, like, I think maybe last month or something, uh, Pokemon Go came out, and then soon after that, uh, uh Legendary announced that it was going to make a Pokemon movie. And they said it was going to be based off the video game Detective Pikachu, which has yet to come out. Which, I was like, Detective Pikachu? That, that's gotta be a joke or something. And then as time went on, including the story that I have right here, where uh, Guardians of the Galaxy and Captain Marvel writer Nicole Perlman and Gravity Falls writer Alex Hirsch are in negotiations to write the Detective Pikachu movie, I was like, oh, this is not a joke. This is a real thing that's happening right here. So, this story comes from Variety.com. And it basically says that Universal will handle uh, the distribution rights for the movie outside of Japan. Because Legendary is producing this movie. And Legendary currently has a deal with Universal. And then Toho, the creators behind Godzilla, will distribute the movie in Japan, as they've done with all of the other Pokemon movies that have been made. So, here's what I'm thinking. Like, Detective Pikachu is an odd way to... is an odd thing to make a Pokemon movie out of, a live-action Pokemon movie. But I'm not on board a live-action Pokemon movie, to be honest, because Pokemon is that thing that... Well, okay, first of all... Anytime an anime is made into a live-action movie, uh, whether it's Dragon Ball Evolution or, let's say, pseudo-anime like Avatar The Last Airbender, it goes horribly wrong. It ends up being one of the worst movies of the year it comes out. Uh, so Pokemon's probably not going to be any different. And plus, it's also based on a video game, and we know how video game movies go. But my other thing is, it's Pokemon... I don't think is a thing that can be worked into live action. Uh, one thing that I realized when thinking back to the live action Transformers movies and the live action Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movies, uh, um, because people remember those properties from the cartoons, 
I mean, Transformers also had, I mean, they also had the toy line, but their main source of popularity was in the cartoons. Uh, and I look at the live action movies for each of those properties. Uh, and as much as I enjoy the um, first three Ninja Turtles movies as a guilty pleasure, um, I just think to myself, I don't think it's even possible to make a live action movie out of these things. Uh, so I'm that's my feelings towards Pokemon. I'm not going to say I'm going to blow off the movie, but I'm just a little concerned cuz Pokemon really is something like important to my childhood. And I don't want to see it get screwed up. I mean, I don't pay attention to the anime anymore, and if I'm going to be completely honest, um they are starting to run out of ideas with um these new Pokemon for Sun and Moon. But uh, that's those are my overall thoughts on a Pokemon movie coming out. More specifically, Detective Pikachu, which that trailer it just looks so weird. I I don't know how to feel about it. But uh, let's stay into the realm of um, Japanese stuff and let's talk about the fact that we are getting a, an animated Godzilla movie. Well, okay, it's going to be made in Japan, and it's probably going to go through the same cycle as it is with Godzilla Resurgence, where it's uh, released in Japan, but America has to wait a few months in order to see it. But anyway, this story comes from TohoKingdom.com, which is a fantastic site for all of your Godzilla, or even just Toho Company Limited needs. But anyway, um, it says here, eager to follow up the success of Godzilla Resurgence, which has just surpassed 3.3 billion yen at the Japanese box office, Toho has announced an animated movie of the King of the Monsters simply titled Godzilla. The project is being directed by Kubun Shizuno with animation by Polygon Pictures, both of which worked on Knights of Sindonia, which I think is on Netflix. I saw a trailer for it um, once this story broke. Writing duties are being handled by Gen Yubuichi, while Hiroyuki Senshita will join Shizuno in directing the production. The film is currently stated for a 2017 release, so not that far from now. And there is a little bit of concept art where it shows some weird spaceship and um, these three people down there, which kind of look like they're dressed um, in the old Exalian uh, costumes from Invasion of the Astro Monster or Godzilla vs. Monster Zero. And they're looking out at a like forest. Like, is it an island? Is it a planet? And then there's just text that says Godzilla and underneath it 2017. So this is actually something that I've been curious about on why it doesn't exist, uh, which is why is there no Godzilla anime? Uh? Because Godzilla is admittedly a license to print money. Uh? So I really was wondering, why is there no Godzilla anime? Uh? And I, eventually somebody did show me, well, there is a Godzilla anime. I'm like, really? How did I miss this? Uh? And they showed it to me, and like all the monsters are really cute-like. Uh? They talk. It's more like a kid's show. And Godzilla even has a girlfriend, which is just basically a pink Godzilla. And like, okay, that's why I've never heard of it. Because it's like some really bizarre kid's show uh, in Japan. Uh. But um, this idea... But the fact that we are finally getting an animated Godzilla movie that's not like all cutesy and stuff. Uh, I'm excited for. Now, here's my concern. Uh. I saw the trailer for Knights of Shindonia, uh, which the animation studio Polygon Pictures made, and the animation in that trailer looks really kind of choppy and unimpressive. Uh, so I'm just nervous, like, is this going to happen to this Godzilla movie? Like, is it going to be um, really choppy and unimpressive as well because with a Godzilla animated movie you have the potential to do things that suit actors cannot do and you aren't really like limited by a budget of actors uh, uh, building sets because everything's done in the computer and then one other thing I'm curious about is is this going to be another standalone movie like is this going to have nothing to do with Godzilla Resurgence, then if that's the case, then we will have three Godzillas at the same time. 
We have an animated Godzilla, we have a Toho Godzilla, and we have the American Godzilla. So, it's just going to be Godzilla Overload, which, um, I mean, I am, I'm not complaining right there. But, um, that's pretty much all I have to say. I'm curious to learn more about what's going on with this, um, Godzilla animated movie. So, we'll see what happens. And with that, we are going to take a quick break. And when we come back, uh, more movie news along the way. Love what I'm doing on this channel? Love watching movie reviews, let's plays, or podcasts? Want to help the channel grow even further? Then you can go over to patreon.com slash therealmrrobinson and give out a monthly donation, and you'll help the channel grow. In return, you'll get special rewards such as access to retro reviews, let's plays, and podcasts before anyone else does. And if you don't want to donate or can't donate, then hey, that's perfectly awesome. You get awesome content regardless. But the really cool thing is you can donate maybe as little as a penny. You can donate a penny a month if you want. So, I mean, any little bit will do, and your support is greatly appreciated. So again, that's patreon.com slash therealmrrobinson. Go over there and donate. Help this channel grow. Again, patreon.com slash therealmrrobinson. All right, I'm back, and let's get into some more movie news. Let's talk about something that just won't die, uh, Gambit. Uh, so for a while, Fox has been trying to make a Gambit spinoff uh, starring Channing Tatum, uh, which, okay, I mean, kind of weird to give this character a spinoff uh, since he's never really appeared in the um, original X-Men movies. Uh, I mean, the first time we saw Gambit was in... Um, in uh, X-Men Origins Wolverine, I tried very hard to forget that movie exists, where he was played by Taylor Kitsch, and he was literally in there as a plot device. At the time that movie was out, Fox had no idea what they were doing, uh, even though I think after X-Men Apocalypse, some people are questioning that same thing. But anyway, uh, what X-Men Origins Wolverine did is they like literally like cherry-picked characters from the comic books, put them into the movie at random, and tried to make them work within the context of the movie, and it didn't work. Huh? Like, especially for poor Deadpool. But ever since, like, Fox got on a roll with uh, First Class, and especially Days of Future Past, they said, you know what? We'll make a Gambit spinoff. Huh? So, for a while, they've had the Planet of the Apes director, Rise of the Planet of the Apes director, uh, and then he left. And then they got the director of The Born Identity, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, and Edge of Tomorrow, Doug Lyman, who is now no longer directing Gambit because, according to The Hollywood Reporter, it says the studio is still intent on starting production in January and has Josh Zetterman on writing duties. A source describes the split as mutual parting of ways, which that could be the case, but I think feel like Fox should just kill this thing right now. People honestly forget that it's happening. I keep forgetting that it's happening because it's been pushed back so many times. And because of the amount of time it's been pushed back, it's gonna probably going to be terrible huh? because they're like really rushing this thing to happen. But what I don't understand is like this is clearly not a rights issue because as long as Fox keeps making like regular X-Men movies... They're going to keep Gambit. Huh? Gambit's not going to fall back into Marvel's hands because he is technically an X-Men. And the last X-Men movie did come out this year. But uh, yeah, Doug Lyman has stepped away from that. And now he's jumped ship to DC to make um, a live-action version of Justice League Dark. Which I honestly have no idea what Justice League Dark is. I assume it's like the evil Justice League. But... Um, it's just, it's funny here. It's like from one sinking ship to another because DC really is not doing any good. And I don't know. I'm not going to get in the whole DC rant thing. But back to Gambit. I think they should just kill this movie now. It's not, I, I'm going to be um, like what Martin Thomas was before the Avengers came out in 2012. It ain't going to happen, huh? I'm going to pull a Martin Thomas and just say that. Huh? So Gambit is not going to happen. 
They're going to cancel that thing. I will actually be shocked if they can get a director before the year ends. Uh, and they are actually in production. So that that pretty much does it for like actual news. Uh, I want to talk about something involving uh, superhero movies that's been going on for a while. And that is over Spider-Man Homecoming. So this story has been actually... This story actually came up a while ago uh, that I just didn't talk about on the last show because I didn't really have an opinion, which was that uh, Zendaya, who um, is mainly known on the Disney Channel, is in Spider-Man Homecoming and is supposedly playing Mary Jane Watson, uh, which a lot of people are losing their heads over because Mary Jane Watson is usually white and Zendaya is not. And you know what, honestly, if Idris Elba makes a good Heimdall, then Zendaya as Mary Jane will be fine. But here's where things, like, take an unexpected turn for me. Because there are other stories that say that um, she is not playing Mary Jane Watson, but she's playing a character, Michelle, which could be based on a comic book character that I don't know anything about, Michelle Gonzalez. And it's one of those things, like, I don't know how to report this because, like, what's true what's not i'm gonna look up on imdb and said see what it says about her but i'll just say like if she is mary jane watson then i don't care really i mean i will admit it is weird that for as comic accurate as marvel likes to be it is weird that they would take somebody as iconic as mary jane watson and make her not white i mean it's just it's not something that completely bothers me at all because like you know what, I mean, as long as the performance is good, again, like with Idris Elba playing Heimdall, then that's all that matters. Huh? Well, that and a really good script. It has to be a combination of the actor's performance and if the character is written well to make me believe that it's Mary Jane Watson. So I'm holding out for the best. So according to IMDb, she is playing Mary Jane Watson. Huh? So I guess it's true. And I don't understand the whole Michelle thing. This is like the most confusing piece of news ever. I'm hoping, I mean, again, if she's playing Mary Jane Watson, then good for her. I don't really care about the race issue. As long as she's good, that's all that matters. And if she's not playing Mary Jane Watson, then, hey, that's fine as well. Huh? Be interesting to see who does play Mary Jane Watson if she's not. Although... If IMDb says she's playing MJ, I'm going to go with IMDb and take it as truth. Huh? But if something else pops up, then um, I'll let you guys know. But l the last thing I want to talk about was uh, there was a story that came out some while ago that um, Donald Glover has been cast as the young Lando Calrissian in the Han Solo prequel film. Huh? But apparently they are rumors because um, Donald Glover went to... Um, because there was an interview with Donald Glover for Time Magazine, and he and he basically responded to the news that he had been cast in it, and he said, "Yep, there are rumors. Huh? I mean, I grew up on Star Wars. My dad was a big fan. I had all the toys when I was little. I had a Darth Vader with the lightsaber he has. It was cool. It's a destiny. Huh? It's like the Bible. I love that franchise. So, this could be one of those things where, like." the deal's still working out and he really can't say much. If he says too much, he's going to get in trouble. So I we'll see what happens. I think Donald Glover is the only one I can think of who could pull off a young Lando Calrissian. I can't think of anybody else who could do it. Huh? And those are big shoes to fill because Billy D. Williams is perfect as Lando. I don't know of anyone who could top it, but um, that's just my overall thoughts. If he's Lando, then awesome. Huh? If he's not, then the search continues. Huh? So that pretty much does it for the news I have, huh? or the last bit of news for this month. Let's go to Blu-rays. Huh? Let's talk about what came out last week. Huh? What came out last week, some interesting stuff. We have um, Season 6 of The Walking Dead, which had a very controversial ending. I don't watch The Walking Dead. I just... For some reason, it's hard for me to take zombies too seriously. And whenever I hear people talk about The Walking Dead, they talk about it like it's a piece of shit. And I'm like, well, why do you keep watching it then? So I don't know what to say. So Walking Dead, like, if it's your thing, then it's your thing. 
Now, a show that I really do want to see is Ash vs. the Evil Dead, uh, which uh, I haven't seen because I don't have stars, and I'm a big fan of the Evil Dead movies. I even enjoyed the remake to a certain extent, uh, so I would really like to see this show, and I've heard um, through um, a lot of people that it's real, really good. Uh. We have the Nice Guys also, which... Um, I don't think I liked as much as everybody else. Um, I thought it was really good, but I, I guess in terms of like laughing, I was a little let down because I didn't think it was as funny as um, everyone else made it to be, and I did think the plot was very convoluted. Uh, I think at a certain point in the movie, it just kind of loses its footing uh, on what it's trying to say. Uh. So, it could get really confusing. I, I really want to watch this again, though, because I liked it enough to where I want to get it on Blu-ray. Then we also have Clown, which, if I'm correct, this is directed by uh, John Watts, who's doing Spider-Man Homecoming. So, let me see. If I, yeah, it is. It's direct. That's weird. Okay, it's a horror movie directed by the guy who's doing the Spider-Man Homecoming movie. So there's that. We also have Narcos Season 1, which I it's a Netflix show. We have The Huntsman, Winter's War, which nobody saw and I don't think anybody really asked for. It, which is good because this is the year of uh, sequels that nobody asked for that bombed. So uh, from the Criterion Collection, we have Woman in the Dunes. And... Um, that was all last week. There's not much else to say. Oh, also from the Criterion Collection, we have A Taste of Honey. And we also have um, the History Channel version of Roots, the new version. And that pretty much does it for last week. Now, what's coming out this week is just as interesting. We're starting to get to the point where the Blu-ray releases are getting better and better. Uh, from the Criterion Collection, we have The Immortal Story and Chimes at Midnight. We also have Arrow Season 4, which I've still never seen Arrow. People have told me that the first season is garbage, but the second season is really good and luckily doesn't require watching Season 1 because it does a recap of everything. So, I mean, I have more interest to see The Flash than I do Arrow, but um, I may maybe one day. It's just it's a, it's a lot of work to watch TV shows, honestly, more than movies. Uh, we also have Star Wars Rebels Season 2, which continues to be better than The Clone Wars, in my opinion. I think because it focuses on new characters instead of like already established characters from the movies. However, I will admit, um, the character of Ezra Bridger is starting to get on my nerves. Because the more it goes on, like he just seems a little more whiny than any of the other heroes. I mean... He's not as whiny as Anakin in Episode 2, but he's just, I don't know, a little too Aladdin-ish. He's just generic. The like other characters I find more interesting. But moving on, we also have The Jungle Book, uh, the 2016 movie, which is currently the only Disney like live-action version of an animated film that's better than the original animated film. Because... Um, I didn't see Cinderella, but Alice in Wonderland was garbage, and Maleficent was also dog shit. But Jungle Book was better. But honestly, it didn't have that much to compete against because the animated Jungle Book is not that impressive to begin with. I mean, I know it's <clears throat> in the Diamond Edition lineup. It's one of those movies that Disney puts in the vaults, but it's just not that impressive. Like, would you really say that the Jungle Book is on par with... Pinocchio, Snow White, or Beauty and the Beast, or Aladdin? I wouldn't. But this is a really good version, and um, it gives me a little more hope that Disney knows what they're doing, and that um, Beauty and the Beast will hopefully be good. Although, the new Beauty and the Beast with Emma Watson, that has a lot to live up to, because Beauty and the Beast is one of the best animated movies that Disney's made. And with that... That does it for the show. Uh, thank you guys for listening. Um, I hope you'll 
So it won't be a while. So it's going to be a while until the next show. It's going to be at the end of the month. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you for sticking around. And uh, yeah, leave a comment and tell me what you thought of these news stories. Like, comment, subscribe, share them with your friends. Don't forget to check out my official website. You can also follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Periscope, Rift.tv. And if you love what I'm doing on this channel, whether it's movie reviews, Let's Plays, or podcasts, you can go over to patreon.com slash therealmrrobinson and give out a small donation. So until next time, this is The Real Mr. Robinson telling you there is only one. <laughs>